Hey everyone, this is Ryan. In today's video, we're going to look at defaulting dates based off of end of week, end of month, first day next month. We'll look at quarters and also end of year and first day of next year. Okay, so on our form, we have a, a bunch of dates listed here. So here's the, the dates that I'll be going through and how to default it to, for example, today, tomorrow, end of year, you know, first day next year, end of month. Um, so we'll go through all these variations and a lot of them are just copy and paste. Uh, so they're very similar. So we'll go through the basics. Um, so if we look at today, this is when you drag and drop a uh, date field onto your form. The default date is actually today. So you'll see that when you have today here, it will show today's date. So if you want to default to tomorrow, for example, all you would have to do is use today plus one. So you're adding a day, okay? And if you want the same day next week, all you would have to do is today plus seven. So it's actually that simple how to add days or you know take away days from your calendar if you know what the duration should be. That should be added or subtracted. Now, for the next ones, I'm going to use the selected date here on the left, um, just because we're dealing with end of week. Um, you know, today's a Friday, so I, I want to show you how this would work if we select a, a date on like a Monday, Saturday, and stuff like that. Um, and also it shows the flexibility of how we choose different days throughout the year, how these change accordingly. So for end of week, um, this one is actually, you know, it's pretty simple, but you just have to be careful of the, the logic here. So what you want to do is we have the variable here called selected date. Okay, so we'll use this date here. And what we will do is say selected date and we'll add and what we're going to do is we're going to set the weekday. We want to find out what the weekday of the selected date is. But what we're going to do is use a function called start of week. And we want the start of week to be the Saturday. So essentially we want Saturday to be the num like day one and Friday to be day seven. Okay. And then what we will do is take away seven days and one thing that we'll have to do is since we're adding the days we're going to put the absolute function around it so what this does if we press play here we'll see that the 21st it should be the 23rd if i select the 28th or let's say the 26th it should be the 30th so you see how that automatically updates so if i go back to this function what we're saying is is for the weekday, and if we select, and we know it's a Monday, okay, so that will be a three, and it's take away four, and since we're putting the absolute, so it'll be add four, so it'll add four days. So we see that it's December 30th. And you'll see how if we jump to the Saturday, it will add six days, okay? So that would be the six, okay? So that's how that function works. Um, it's pretty simple to use. Now, if you wanted something similar of, let's say next week on Monday, you would actually just copy this function, put it in here in the default date. And instead of Saturday, you would just switch this to uh, Tuesday to being the first day of the week. So here you will see how the selected date is the 31st. And if we go here, we see that it's a Monday. And then if we go back and let's say we decide, hey, let's go to the third, you see it gets updated to the ninth, which is the Monday. So that's how next end of week, next week can work with this simple function, okay? Now end of month is actually, you know, it's a bit simpler um, what we have to do here is we're going to use the date function. So the date function allows you to specify the year, the month, and the day. So what we're going to do is we're going to specify the year. So we're going to grab the year of our selected date. And for the month, we'll grab the month of our 
select a date. And what we're going to do is actually add a month. And what we're going to do is enter in the number one. So we actually want to grab the first day of the next month. And the reason why we want to do that is there's no real function out there in Power Apps to say how many days there are in a given month. So it's better to go to, there's always a first day in a month. Um, so it's better to go to the first day of the next month and minus a day. So you'll see how it goes to the 31st. So if I select any date here, if I go back to, let's say, November 2022, it automatically updates to the uh, 30th. And if we happen to go back to February, so that's where it's challenging because you have leap years here, it will always select the correct date. So if it's the 28th or 29th, it will always work. So that's the simplest way to implement this. Now, if you wanted to, uh, for example, find the net for next day or a first or next month, the first day of the next month, all you have to do is that same formula and we're just not going to take away a day. So that's the formula that we pretty much started out with for end of month um, and we took away a day and now we're just going to remove that. Okay, so it's really that simple there. And um, for the next month, last day, um, what we're going to do is paste that in. And all we have to do is add two months. So we'll add two. So if, for example, we go to, let's say November of 2022, and we'll select that. So you see how it goes to December 31st. And then if we go to December, let's say 21st here, you will see it goes to January 31st, 2023. So it really, it's easy to update that way. Now, the next one that we're going to look at is a little bit more complicated, which is end of quarter. Okay, so there's no real way to def define like the fiscals here. So what we're going to do is like, uh, we're going to do a calendar year by quarter. And what we will do is saying if the month of the selected date is in, we're going to do a little mini uh, collection here to say if it's in the first, second, or third month of the year, we're going to say the date is going to be the year of the selected date. And then it will always be the third month, which is March 31st. So that's always for from a fiscal, uh, sorry, calendar year uh, quarter, it's always gonna be March 31st. And then what we will do is the same thing above um, for the others. So what we will do is copy this, paste it in. So we'll say if it's in April, May, June, it will be June 30th. And we'll copy this. And for the last one, what we will do, or sorry, second last one, because we have to also do the end of year. So if this is July, August, September, we will do September 30th. Oops. And then the default, because we'll have all of them captured at this point, is actually going to be the 31st of December. So if we select this, we'll say December 31st. And then all we have to do at this point is collapse our if statements. And it looks like I forgot a comma up here. That's why I had an error. So we'll just close our if statements at this point, and then we'll have it. So you see for the end of quarter, if we were in December, we see December 31st. If we go back to, let's say May, that should be June, we soon see June 30th, 2022. And if we go back to, let's say February, and we'll choose the second, we see it's March 31st. So you can easily adjust these formulas 
to match, let's say, a corporate fiscal year. You just have to, you know, rejig the dates around a bit. Um, but it's pretty much, you know, that easy to implement. You don't have to get too complicated with the logic here. And if we wanted next quarter first day, um, it's pretty simple. We're just going to copy this formula, go over to the default day here, and then we're just going to add a day. So we're just going to add a day to each. One plus one and plus one. So you'll see here how it goes to April 1st for the first quarter of the uh, first day of the next quarter. Now the last one I have is a little bit more challenging. Um, it's going to be the next last day of the next quarter. So if you want something a uh, you know a quarter out, you could do that. So we're going to take what we pasted before. We're going to paste in the default date. And all you're doing here is just switching around the dates, like the, the dates of the quarters. So we're going to say if it's in the January, February, March, it's going to go to June 30th. Whereas if it's the others, you know, we'll be able to adjust accordingly. So let's do that. So January, February, March, we're going to June 30th. And we're sort of shifting everything up. So this, if it's April, May, June, it'll be September 30th. And if it's in July, August, September, it'll be the 31st. And down here, when we get to end of year, it will actually be the following year, March 31st. So what we have to do is add a year to the default here default option if it happens to be um, October, November, December. So if we go back to here and we take a look, we could see we're in February, we do see June 30th. And if we happen to go to, for example, let's say October, we do see March 31st, 2023. So that's it for quarters. We'll take a look at year-end. Year-end is actually much simpler than quarters. <laughs> so what we'll do is uh, open up our default date parameter here. And all we have to do is enter in the date. We're going to enter in the current year. So of the selected date. And we're going to say 12, you know, December 31st. So we know that it will always be the last day of the year. So it doesn't matter which day we select here, it will always be the last day, but let's change the year, click OK, and you'll see that it always goes to the last day of the year. Now, if we wanted the first day of next year, um, what we could do is, you know, this is, we, we could add a day to it, but it's less, you know, less informative. What we could do instead is we could say date of and we'll select the year of selected date. We'll add a year and we'll say it's always the first month and the first day. So January 1st. So you see how it's in 20, uh, 2008, we see 2009. And if we go back to our current year and we'll select 2023 and we're currently in January, We'll go to the 18th here. We see that it goes to January 1st, 2024. So that's it for reviewing the dates and how to default them in, you know, by week, month, quarter, year. Hopefully this gives you enough ideas how to accomplish, you know, defaulting dates on your side, depending on the parameters that you have.